Hello and welcome to Reality Report. Today I'm here with Carl Pierce to talk everything about digital twins. Digital twins are nothing new. The term was coined by Michael Greaves around 20 years ago, but especially in recent years, there's a clear consensus that digital twins will play a major role in industrial companies. Just last month, CNBC predicted that digital twins are set for rapid adoption in 2023. So Kyle, for anyone who is either getting started with their digital twin or wants to get more out of their existing digital twin, are there particular areas of focus or pitfalls that they should be aware of? Yeah, absolutely, Marilee. Um, there's, there's a few different challenges that come up very commonly as we talk with customers and also uh, looking at results of industry surveys for customers that are companies that are looking to implement a digital twin solution. And if we look at all of the different challenges we hear about, there's really sort of three or four different ones that are, that are pretty common. Um, and number one relates to the, the handover of data from the initial project design phase to the operation of that facility. And generally that that handover is done in a very manual fashion. So stacks of paper documents or large folders full of uh, unintelligent PDFs, things like that. So that, that documentation isn't really usable beyond the design phase. The next major challenge that we see um, is related to the intelligence of those documents. And so in a lot of cases, as I say, that the, the formats that are provided are very unintelligent formats of documentation. It means that we can't leverage the information contained within those documents in the future. And so uh, the areas that we suggest customers focus on to be successful with digital twins relate to those challenges. Number one, let's make sure that we hand over documentation in, in, a, in a more uh, common format, in a more intelligent format. If for whatever reason, we don't have those documents in an intelligent format, let's put some effort into making sure that we smartify the contents of those documentation uh, of those documents, make sure we can use those going forward. Other challenges we see then too related to the success of a digital twin are a lack of, um, of, of reality capture that that digital twin can be centered around. What I mean by reality capture is things like a 3D model or uh, laser scans, things like that. They're, they're a, often a challenging thing to put in place, but once they are in place, they, they provide that really good core of the, of the digital twin that, that customers can leverage. And then the final challenge that we see relates to the actual ongoing operations of a facility. Uh, the, the, the vast number of different vendor equipment uh, uh, automation systems that are involved mean that collecting data and, and leveraging that data can be very challenging from all these disparate systems. So if we can put some mechanisms in place that allow us to use standardized connectors into those different systems, collect data, leverage that into the digital twin. Right, and at Hexagon, we talk a lot about smart digital reality. Can you explain how it intersects with a digital twin? Yeah, absolutely. So really what I've been talking about for the last few minutes here is a, a smart digital reality the term digital twin is a very generic one. It can refer to lots and lots of different things and lots of vendors use that term uh, for their own purposes. Uh, for example, the, the stack of documents that I'm talking about, if they're digitized, uh, could be considered by itself a digital twin. Uh, the, the 3D model I talked about is, is a form of a digital twin. Uh, even configuration backups out of the control system would be a digital twin. So a smart digital reality is really bringing together all of those different pieces into a single pane of glass style environment so that uh, plant management can get KPIs, so that maintenance engineers access all of the design information of the equipment. They can review the 3D model before going out to site. All of that information is in one place. All the data is collected in one place. Everybody can make use of it for better decisions uh, to run their facilities more safely, more effectively, more sustainably. Thank you, Kyle. Um, this brings us to the end of our first reality report. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and we look forward to seeing you again for our next episode.